Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this screencast in which we are going to talk about the break-even level of earnings before interest and taxes. For that, we have some information here. A firm has 100,000 shares to begin with and it is considering borrowing a sum of $50,000 and with that amount of money, some shares can be repurchased. Um, if the firm goes ahead and borrows this sum of $50,000, it is going to have to pay an interest at the rate of 5% and that is why this thing, this 5% is our RD, that is cost of debt. Also, uh, at the moment, the price at which the shares of this company are trading in the market is $10 per share. So, we have P is equal to $10 per share. Uh, for our calculational ease, we are going to assume um, taxes to be absent from the picture and let us see the first question that we need to answer and that is if the firm goes for debt how many shares are going to remain outstanding because we have set up the problem in a way uh, where we say that if the company goes ahead and borrows fifty thousand dollars it is going to use those fifty thousand dollars to buy back some shares so the question uh, that faces us now is that with these fifty thousand dollars how many shares can be bought and the answer is remaining outstanding shares let us call them n2 so that we can differentiate this uh, number of shares with these number of shares here so let's say remaining outstanding number of shares is going to be equal to the difference between the current shares which are given to us a hundred thousand shares minus number of shares we buy back so let's copy down the information current number of shares 100,000 that is given to us here n1 and with $50,000 now how many shares can we buy back we have $50,000 to use to buy back the shares and the price of each share is given to us $10 per share so we can simply divide 50,000 by 10 to get 5,000 shares. So, if 5,000 shares are what we are buying back with our $50,000, therefore the remaining number of shares that is N2 is going to be the current number of shares that is 100,000 minus the number of shares that we buy back 5,000. So, 95,000 shares are going to remain. Now, uh, the second question is how much minimum minimum should the firm have as EBIT to make the proposed debt feasible for it? And the answer for that is pretty simple. The answer is to find out the break-even level of EBIT. Find out the break-even level of EBIT. And if your earned EBIT is greater than the break-even level of EBIT, then you can opt for borrowing $50,000. That is, you can add some leverage to your capital structure. Otherwise, if your earned EBIT is less than the break-even EBIT, then you remain as it is. You maintain your status quo. You don't go ahead and borrow those $50,000. So you don't add leverage to your capital structure. So then what we need to do is to find out the break-even level of EBIT. Um, first, we need to define what is that. Break-even EBIT is that level of EBIT where the EPS of the two capital structures is same so that there is nothing to choose between the two capital structures uh, it would make no difference at the break-even level of EBIT uh, if if you choose to remain an all equity financed firm or you choose to add some debt in your capital structure and why you would be indifferent because the EPS that is the earnings per share of the two capital structures would be identical at that level of EBIT so let us uh, set up what would be our EPS under the current capital structure where we have no debt earnings per share so that is um, found out by dividing your EBIT by the number of shares outstanding so when you have no debt that means you are going to also have no interest liability in that case your EPS formula would look like this EBIT divided simply by the number of shares outstanding at the moment which is n1 so we write it here n1 and leave it like that 
Um, but if the firm goes ahead and borrows now that sum of $50,000, it is going to have some debt in its capital structure. And when that happens, some amount of interest would have to be taken out of this EBIT first. And then we are going to divide the net amount by the number of shares outstanding. And also remember the number of outstanding shares would change because with the $50,000 that you would borrow, you would have bought back some shares and the new number of shares would be N2 in that case. So let us set up the equation for EPS when you go ahead and opt for the proposed capital structure. So what we do is um, we are going to start again with EBIT and from that we are going to subtract the amount of interest. How do we calculate the amount of interest? We take the dollar amount of debt which is D and divide this by the rate of interest which is given to us in this case and denoted as RD. So dollar amount of debt times the interest rate that is going to be subtracted from the EBIT and whatever remains will need to be divided by the number of outstanding shares and that in this case would be N2. Now let us um, fill in the numbers into these equations. Which ones? Let us look at this one first. The EPS under the current capital structure. Let us write some numbers for it. What are we solving for in this equation? We are solving for the break even EBIT. So the EBIT is going to remain as it is and everything else we are going to fill into this equation. So we leave here EBIT as it is and divide this by N1 100 thousand shares and in the second one here what we are going to do is we are going to pick up our EBIT which we are solving for so we simply write EBIT and then we are going to write a number for this item here D times RD let's look what is the amount for D the amount of D is uh, $50,000 here and RD is 5%. So, 5% of $50,000 would become this item here, D times RD. For D, you have $50,000 and for RD, you have 5%. So, 5% of $50,000 gives us $2,500. So, let us write here $2,500. Once we um, do that, we are going to close this bracket and divide this item by the number of outstanding shares after the repurchase is complete that is n2 number of shares which is this one here 95,000 shares so let us write here 95,000 shares now we know at the break even level both the EPSs should be equal so what we are going to do is we are going to equate this EPS which is under the proposed capital structure with this EPS which is under the current capital structure and from that equality we are going to solve for EBIT. Uh, I have already solved uh, that for you and let me now show it to you how that solution has been arrived at. What we have done is look at the left hand side of this equation here this one EBIT over 100,000 this is this equation here the equation for EPS under the current capital structure and then we have equated this with the equation for the uh, with the EPS formula for the proposed capital structure, this one, which is this thing here. So after that, what has uh, been done is we have taken this $100,000 to the right hand side. Now, since this is being divided on the left hand side, uh, when it is transposed to the right hand side, it goes and gets multiplied with the term. So that is what is happening here. $100,000 moves from here to here. And that's why we have written it here. So we have in the second step 100,000 100, uh, times EBIT minus 2500 over 9500. Now in this step what has happened is we have solved this 100,000 over 95,000 gives you 1.05 and inside the bracket you have EBIT minus 2500 just like you had it here. After that it is simple transposition. So you have EBIT and then you open up the bracket 1.05 EBIT and then minus this minus here, this minus here, 
1.05 times 2500 becomes 2625. After that, a little more transposition, 1.05 EBIT. Now, we pick it up from here and take it to the left-hand side. So, we have here on the left-hand side EBIT minus 1.05 EBIT and on the right-hand side, we are left with minus 2625. So, this item here EBIT minus 1.05 EBIT gives us minus 0.05 EBIT and on the right hand side we again have minus 2625 that means your EBIT is going to be 2625 over 0 0.05 that is $52,500. You could check this result if this result for your break even EBIT is correct or not. You could just substitute this number 52,500 here and then you could again substitute this number here and both these um, sides of the equation must come out to be equal. Let us do that. $52,500, if we pick it up from here and put it here, it's going to look like this, 52,500 over 1,000 or 100,000 and that gives us an EPS of 52 cents. And if we pick up this number from here and substitute it in this equation, uh, this part of the equation, then it's going to, this part of the equation is going to look like this. And again, you see that the EPS for the proposed capital structure is 0.52 or 52 cents. So, since both EPSs are equal at this level of EBIT, therefore, our calculated break-even level of EBIT is correct. And therefore, our conclusion is that if the firm, let us write it here, if the firm can earn dollars 52,500 and above, uh, it can opt for debt, otherwise, otherwise it should stick to equity. And that is it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.